Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to show you these three node groups that I created and that you can download from the link in the description as usual. And they practically do the same thing with a bit of uh, slight differences here and there. I'm going to show you what they are. But uh, what they actually do, they create a face out of a mesh closed loop or a curve a cyclic curve so like a closed uh, curve and yeah we do have uh, like a node for that but that node doesn't work uh, as I would expect it to work so I created something uh, that's a bit better so for example if we have this well, let's just see how it works so fill curve if if I just insert it here uh, okay, first it, uh, it tells me that this is not a curve, but it's a mesh. So in this case, since this is mesh, it's just, a, as you can see, five mesh points connected together. So we need to curve to mesh, sorry, mesh to curve. Okay, and now, as you can see, uh, it kind of flattened it uh, on the zero plane zero xy plane and so this is not what we want right and, and so let's just get rid of this for a second and let's try with these fill curve nodes that I created so uh, this one fill curve single as you can see it works it works okay and curve multiple also works fine and I think you probably and this one the ultimate also works as it should and as it you would expect it to and it doesn't mind the fact that this is a mesh and this for example is a curve so let's add a, a test thing and if we just for example put this one this one is also going to work and let me just turn on these wireframe I really like these uh, so that I can see better what's going on so as you can see uh, regardless the fact that it, if it's a mesh or if it's a curve it will still work uh, the way it's supposed to but where we have some differences for example in these kind of uh, situations okay this one is a mesh uh, and this one are all curves so we're gonna apply the same geometry node uh, for both of them let's do it all at once like this and let's see what happens so when, when we when you go into uh, when we apply to this one and this one is remember a mesh so let's do the curve single and as you can see it's all messed up Just, that's because this one works only on single curves or on single mesh loops open mesh loops uh, but uh, this one the multiple as you can see works perfectly and and it will also work see and this is quite nice so and, and let's try also the other one the ultimate and it also works well before I tell you the differences between these two that kind of do the same thing this one as I told you is for only one curve and only one loop and I'm, I'm keeping it here because sometimes that's all you need and this one takes uh, only 0 0.24 milliseconds while these probably take more 36 milliseconds it's not it's a lot and this one 1 1.5 so sometimes it's good to have this one and uh, uh, I'm going to tell you in a second what's the difference between these two. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to show you how this one is created. And it's, it's kind of simple. And we're going to do it uh, on this example, for example. So here, uh, this one, fill curve single, is really, really simple. And I'm going to show you how I did it. So first here we have a mesh loop. Let's call it loop, but it's actually just a polygon, a mesh polygon. And here we have uh, these vertices 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and their position. And so what I want to do, I want to uh, I want to find out how many vertices are there. And so let's uh, just search for the 
attribute statistic node. Let's just plug it in here. And then let's add index node like this. And let's plug it into the attribute socket. And so now here we can take the maximum. So it's going to return, uh, as you know, it's going to return uh, four because four is the maximum number of indices we have. So let's just uh, let's just reroute something so that we can see it right here and we can plug it in here so that we can be sure that this is in fact what we want and what we what we got. And as you can see now if I just type something like max I can see the number is four. But what I actually want is the number the total number of the uh, indices which is five because the first one is zero so it's not four but it's five so we need to add one to get to number five and if, if i plug it here five so this is the number of indices that we have and then then i'm going to add a circle mesh circle and i'm gonna set the number of vertices i'm gonna connect this socket of five indices so five vertices of my polygon to the number of vertices here and then i'm gonna i'm gonna connect it on the output here and as you can see i'm having a, a circle of five vertices which is actually a pentagon in this uh, uh, case but that's not the point and i'm gonna fill type and gone so now i'm having this plane with five vertices and all i need to do now is transfer the attribute so transfer attribute from my geometry input and we need uh, the the attribute we're going to transfer is the position attribute so these values right here uh, so we need a vector because the position uh, attribute is a vector. So let's add the position. Let's plug it in here. And let's do this, index. And then we need to set a position of my vertices of the mesh circle along this position of my original mesh so I just need to uh, connect this attribute which is the position that I transferred like this okay so something weird happened then why is that well that's because and I'm going to show you in a second display attributes node that is also something you can download from the link in the description and, and I'm going to show you the vertices that are here so the vertices here are kind of strangely aligned 0 1 3 4 2 that's not a, a lot of uh, sense right there so what we need to do before all this we need to, if this is a mesh, if this is a curve, there's no problem with it because, uh, because the curve is always aligned. So the first line of the curve is zero index and then the next one is going to be one and the next one is going to be two. So it's going to be a line. Uh, there's no way that you can have a curve that's like jumping vertices like that. So, um, so we need to actually convert it to a curve. So. So we need to mesh to curve, to curve, like this, and, and, and then it's fixed, it's practically fixed. I always like to do also the back curve to mesh, so that's it. And this is how, uh, if you can, now I can switch off this node group and as you can see it's it's working perfectly and this is 
the way to create that fill curve single node. Okay, now let's go back to show you the other two. So what's the problem with multiple curves or multiple closed loop polygons? Uh, well, the problem is, uh, wh why can I do this when there are more of them? Well, that's because uh, this attribute statistic node doesn't work with fields. Uh, as you can see from this square grayish type of socket, this is a fixed number. It's a constant. Uh, so it doesn't, it's not, it's not like you can plug in like here, you can plug in fields, but uh, what you get out on the outside is always something that's fixed. So, so if I'm having like different mesh islands, different uh, curves or different mesh loops that have a different number of vertices, uh, then this max, uh, will not work because we need it to be always a different number uh, so, so th th this is not a way to do it but we can use that loop kind of things for those who watched my previous video and i will link the description below so that you can see uh, how i actually did this curve multiple and this is how you do it so this is uh, that kind of loop kind of thing so in each of these loops i i'm doing the same thing that i did for the single fill curve node but for every time for another mesh island for another curve for another mesh polygon and, and I don't want to go into detail with this, but there is a link in the description for the video about these loop kind of things that, that are not complicated, but, but uh, I don't want to repeat myself since I already did that video. So that's how I did this uh, fill curve multiple. The problem with this though is that you can have as many curves as you have these loops. And I kind of stopped at 500. So 500, if you have more than 500 different faces that you want to fill, you're going to need to split them and then use this node on uh, different sections of it. Uh, and another thing that I don't like with this kind of um, approach is that you have this group node in your list here where is it this loop help index and and I, I don't like that i want it to be like clean but unfortunately that's the side effect of this and you will also have this switch 20 node that i created so that when you don't have as much mesh lines or as much curves you don't need to like process all these so the minimum you will process is 25 of them uh, but if, if there is um, uh, more of them then others are going to go into this node switch and and uh, so this is just to make uh, processing faster because imagine passing the geometry through 500 of these loops and uh, it's better to like uh, limit them uh, accordingly and there's not going to be a lot of situation when you're going to need 500 of these or so uh, that's why we also have this node group that's also taking up space and uh, it's right here in your list switch 20 okay and then there is the last one which is kind of the best of two worlds uh, but unfortunately you will have to just download it because it's kind of complicated to explain and I noticed that the ones that are interested in how these things work actually download the file instead of uh, watching the whole video where I spent uh, 20, 30, 40 minutes to explain it and there is only 
I don't know, 5% of you that actually watches the explanation. So I kind of showed you the principles behind this. And if you do want to download these node groups, uh, that would be a perfect way to support this channel. And another thing I forgot to say, this node right here, it actually works only with uh, Blender 3.2. So that's another reason why we have three of them because before we got the nodes uh, from 3.2 it was probably impossible to do it the way I did it right here with this third node. And another cool thing about this node is that it transfers an integer attribute. So uh, if there is an integer attribute here uh, assigned to each vertex it will be passed on at the right vertex in the fill curve geometry also even though uh, you kind of notice that that's a whole different geometry we are, we are creating a circle or something that has nothing to do with that we are just taking the position of the original so uh, these attributes would uh, kind of disappear and I found a way to like transfer them on thanks to these nodes uh, that we got in 3.2 blender 3.2 anyway that's it for this video thank you so much for watching remember you can download these notes from the link in the description and i will talk to you in the next one bye bye